wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the, world. in the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com. The Chris Voss Show. Dot com. Welcome to the show, folks. We certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks for being here once again. Hey, the Chris Voss Show, the family that loves you but doesn't judge you. The best kind of family there is. You can get it on shirts coming this winter. I don't know. Good that we're not doing shirts this winter. I don't know what the hell we're doing this winter. And we're going to stay warm. And you can stay warm, too, by referring the show to your family, friends, and relatives at Chris Voss. Uh, I don't know. Any of the Chris Voss Show channels, go to YouTube.com forward slash Chris Voss. Goodreads.com forward slash Chris Voss. LinkedIn, the big LinkedIn group, Chris Voss Leadership Institute.com, and all that good stuff. Stay tuned. we got some amazing CEO uh, interviews on leadership, too, coming up as well. Today, we have another amazing author on the show she's got a new book that's coming out august 30th 2022 you can pick it up and pre-order for your book club be the first one to read it and i find it most interesting because i've always uh, been interested in their their culture their caste society and everything else uh i'm always interested in learning new things so uh that's why i have the show is so i can learn some stuff this is how i learn people i skipped uh i skipped college <laughs> so she's the author of the new book the newlyweds Rearranging Marriage in Modern India. It comes out August 30, 30th, or 30, 2022. Monzi Choksi is on the show with us today. She's going to be talking to us about her amazing book, what went into it, uh, all the research she did. And you're probably going to learn some interesting things about stuff and how the world is changing. You know, it's changing everywhere around the world. You know, modernism and traditionalism and everything else. She is a graduate of the Columbia School of Journalism and two-time Livingston Award finalist. Her writing has appeared in the New York Times, the New Yorker, National Geographic, Harper's Magazine, The Atlantic, and more. She lives in Dubai with her husband and son. The Newlyweds is her first book. Welcome to the show, and congratulations on your first book. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. There you go. And uh, give us your dot-coms or wherever you have uh, on yes. the interwebs you want people to find you. Yeah. So my website is mansichoksi.com. That's M-A-N-S-I-C-H-O-K-S-I.com. Um, Twitter is mansi underscore choksi. Uh, Instagram is mansi underscore choksi. LinkedIn is mansi choksi. And Facebook is Mansi Choksi. There you go. So what motivated you want to write this as your first book? Yeah. Um, so I grew up in India. I grew up in Mumbai. Um, and one of the things that I um, constantly thought about is how so many young people um, don't, how the society does not implode from so many young people pushing against what we want and what um, we, we can have. Um, India has one of the world's largest young populations. Um, yet we have, uh, you know, we're, we're expected to adhere to um, centuries old traditions, um, especially with um, love and marriage. Um, you know, love is essentially taboo um, and marriage is seen as a sort of arrangement uh, between two families that belong to the same uh, warp and weft, um, uh, you know, in the same sort of like hierarchy of caste, class, region, language. Um, you know, marriage is just seen as an extension of two families, essentially. Um, so th there's a lot of pressure placed on who you can choose um, to marry. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to and I wanted to really tell the story about what was happening in India right now mm -hmm. through the vehicle of the love story. Um, so I wanted to discuss serious forces that are changing modern India. Um, for example, um, how, you know, the, the, the sort of relevance of a millennia old caste prejudice in society today, um, you know, our colonial history with... Um, homophobic uh, legislation um, and you know how that um, how, how uh, ancient Indian society like does not have a base like did not have a culture of um, uh, you know like ostracizing um, LGBT or same-sex love um, and thirdly about um, a, a Hindu and Muslim couple that finds itself um, at the center of a political controversy known as love jihad and I wanted to use that story um, to highlight a larger sort of um, theme about, you know, India's lurch to the right. Um, 
So I wanted to I wanted to use this, the vehicle of the love story to discuss mm. the big issues that we're facing in India at the moment, and especially for what's at stake for young people. Mm -hmm. And and India has uh, a lot of different, I believe, languages or sub languages, don't they? Yeah. And then different um, thousands, millions. Wow. And then yeah, cultures. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, here in America, we just use the F word everywhere. And that's, pretty <laughs> much, that's pretty much our language. Um, uh, um, colonialism brought some of that. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so you've got that. Well, yeah, we've got that too. Great. Yeah, we, yeah we, we export Americanism to everybody and ruin their country. Um, so, yeah, this is kind of interesting. You know, I didn't know about the caste system in yeah. in India until I read, I think, Israel Wil Wilkerson's book on, mm -hmm. on caste, yeah. which yeah. is incredible. Yeah. And I learned so much about it. And, and it was, uh, uh, you know, I mean... It, Hey, to, to me, it seems very crazy, but, you know, I, I grew up in the age where I think in England, you, you know, up until uh, Margaret Thatcher, you know, they had the they had their system, too. And it, it's really it's really curious. And and I often thought about that because, you know, I've seen Romeo and Juliet, the play, um, you know, I know when two, you know, you can't you can't hold back love. Is there a song yeah. or something yeah. that I'm thinking of, uh, right. you know, when people love each other, you know. And it's kind of interesting. You you mentioned early on that you know love isn't something that uh, yeah I guess in the traditionalism India really isn't a thing then, huh? Yeah, no. I mean, it, there has always been a history of love in India, but society mm -hmm. has um, always sort of thwarted it. Um, so even mm -hmm. our greatest love stories, for instance, um, Bollywood, which is you know essentially like our largest, um, like. I would say it's like our national narrative in a sense because it's just so popular and widespread. Mm. Are there, there are eighty percent uh, romantic films? Um, mm. So um, yeah, I mean, love and the you know um, uh, the uh, the concept of love is, and, and you know these forbidden love stories especially are are, are pervasive across India. Um, and uh, but the but the truth is that in real life. Um, the stakes are really high for people who choose to love outside of tradition. Mm. Um, and those stakes can look, um, you know, really dangerous. Um, so one of the couples in the book, the, the, um, their names are Nitu and Davinder. They belong to different castes and they're from the same village. And according to um, rural um, customs, um, men and women of the same village are considered brothers and sisters. So mm. it's a form of incest in their mind. And they um, also belong to different castes. Um, um, so when they run away, the, their main worry is uh, being targeted for honor killing by their community. Um, they're worried that they will, wow. yeah, they will be kidnapped and um, they will be um, um, they will be killed. Um, and and that's and that's not a and that's not a, a paranoia or like something completely far fetched because um, you know there are instances that we hear of constantly where um, you know couples that uh, run away for or elope together for love. Um, uh, outside of these um, uh, boundaries of caste and religion, uh, do often find themselves um, at you know at, uh, in the middle of these ho horrific murder cases. Um, uh, not far from where Nitu and Devinder grew up, there was another couple um, that wh who's also uh, mentioned in the book, named Man Manoj and Bubbly, who um, you know who sought police protection. Um, you know, like got all the courts help um, to to give them the protection to go to a safe place. Um, and eventually, um, you know, uh, they were they were um, kidnapped by the girl's family. Um, the uh, Manoj was um, sort of like um, a strangle, strangled to death, and uh, wow. Bubbly was forced to drink insecticide. And uh, you know, their bodies were just found uh, wrapped in gunny sacks in some village canal. Um, so there are really there are really serious um, stakes here. Yeah, that's like a whole. That's a worse story than Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, is, you got somebody else making drink the poison. Um, the uh, speaking, uh, I'm not going to do that joke. Um, the, the, uh, this is really interesting. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting to me that honor killings are still going on. I guess. Yeah. Is that legal in India? How does no, that work? No. Like, um, so that's the thing. Um, so honor killings for the longest time, um, on, there was no separate law to deal with honor killings. Mm -hmm. They were clubbed with murders. Um, hmm. And, you know, there, you know the, uh, unlike, say, the dowry law, which has tradition at the root of that law. So there, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a law for anti-dowry um, practice. So dowry yeah. is, is the wealth that the, fam the, the bride's family is traditionally expected to hand over to the man who will marry her. Mm. And it's a form of, um, you know, 
a, a big uh, source of domestic abuse because the uh, uh, the groom's family can keep on harassing uh, the bride um, uh, and you know essentially blackmailing her family for more and more money um so so there was a special law that was uh, uh, you know i I'm, i'm not sure in which year but there was a special law that came into effect that did a really good job at tackling that issue but it, with honor crimes for instance that has not been the case so far because they have always been clubbed with murder um and often we find that um um you know policemen that are that are investigating um uh, on a crimes are also on the side of um families or empathize with families that perpetrate these crimes wow. um so that's another problem um so currently there's a law in um the parliament up for discussion um mm-hmm. to kind of um start a separate law for honor killing and hopefully that'll pass soon and you know things will look better yeah that would be ideal i mean yeah. i mean uh i mean if somebody runs off with my daughter i'm just like just as long as you pay for all the yeah. stuff she keeps buying on Amazon. Uh, I'm just kidding. I don't have a daughter. What? But if I did, that would probably be the joke I'd use. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be wanting to kill you. I'd be like, thanks for taking over the payments. Um, the, uh, I, yeah, that, that's really, that's really strange. You know, I grew up in religion where, you know, it's very cultish, uh, especially in the religion I grew up in. Uh, and you know, they're, you know, you have to get married in the temple and all this kind of silliness and stuff. Um, it's, it's, uh, but this is like a whole new level. And, you know, I heard about a lot of this growing up and you would think in 2022 that we're more modern than we are, but I don't know if you've seen the place lately where we're still, um, stuck in a lot of old world stuff. Um, so you tell the stories and I imagine, you tell the stories of one couple that are, that I believe, are gay, or a lesbian couple. Yes, yes, um, yes. There's one and of course, couple. you know, more and more that's be become accepted. Uh, people can come out that are gay; they don't have to hide anymore. Um, and so, yeah, I can imagine in countries that are still struggling with embracing this, that's is 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 yeah. uh, is are, is LGBTQ gay marriage is that legal in your country at all? Yeah. Um, so. No, it's not legal, but it's also it's it's decriminalized um, lately. So, mm. um, so with the uh, Indian Penal Code that was uh, drafted with the help of the British uh, colonizers, uh, came an act called um, uh, Section three seventy seven, which essentially outlawed um, homosexual behavior, but also clubbed um, homosexual behavior with um, you know pedophilia and um, you know other horrible things. Um, and yeah, and then, you know, there's been a, there's been a long, long, um, timeline of uh, activism around this law, because as, as, you know, as the country kind of, um, you know, liberalized, opened up a lot of the other laws that were regressive and, you know, kind of like had no space in modern India were, were updated, changed, struck down. Um, but, um, yeah, in 2010, there was a law that was passed that would, that decriminalized, um, homosexual behavior. But then there was, a, you know, there was a series of other litigations that, put, uh, you know, kind of like penalized that behavior again. And late, just in 2018, finally, um, a law was passed to decriminalize um, homosexuality in India. Mm. Um, but that doesn't mean that they that homosexual people, or LGBT people, are, are given equal rights. Absolutely not. Mm. Um, it just means that it's no longer a criminal act. Wow. So there's a long, long fight and a long way to go before, um, you know, there can be equal rights for, for everybody and every citizen of India. It's an interesting journey. And one, one thing yeah. I found that was interesting in your book is in India, two out of three people are under the age of 35. So yeah. you have a kind of a dwindling, you know, dying off older class like we do. And you have this, yeah. you have an, a massive group of people that want to modernize the world. Right. So there's probably a lot of battle between the old and new worlds. Absolutely, but also it's 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 a very this this particular generation is really unique mm-hmm. uh, because this is the first generation that's had access to uh, mobile phones, um, to, to you know, to like all forms of media, um, and uh, you know, it's kind of opened up our worlds in in a way that has never happened before in India. Um, um, you know, our lives were kind of limited to to your home, your street, your city at the most. But now mm-hmm. suddenly we're, you know, we're able to see what teenagers um, in South Korea or in the United States are doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and on one hand, there is this like pull of like modernity. But then mm-hmm. there's also this very deep push. I mean, sorry, push of modernity pull either way. Uh, the, the push of, um, of tradition, like we are really mm-hmm. deep rooted. 
we have really internalized um, um, you know like the, the the concept of filial duty is really huge in indian society mm-hmm. um like um, you know kind of um uh, uh, you you want to do well by your parents expectations um and um, if you don't you you know there is a a, a huge um, a, a personal sort of like feeling of failure Mm. um if you if you don't um sort of like um don't don't have that uh, duty bound feeling uh-huh. um yeah so um, recently actually a poll was conducted where uh, they did a bunch of um you know like they surveyed a bunch of ad, uh, a bunch of young people in india and asked them about their attitudes towards love and marriage and it was mm. astounding because most most young people actually said that yeah we actually believe in like marrying in the same caste we actually believe in you know choosing a partner from our own religion um uh you know that um uh, a, a love marriage is not uh, arranged marriage is better than love marriage so you know um on one hand you might think that this uh, young people want something else but it's also that it's also true that uh, a lot of young people want to live their lives exactly as their parents lived it mm yeah well i mean there's a lot of uh i don't know it's really interesting to me what's going on in india because you know we have a dwindling population and we're on decline uh so is and you look at what's going on in Japan uh yeah. they're in decline and they have some real gentrification problems yeah. uh china does as well and for a long time you know it was uh, it widely accepted that china would become the new rise of the dominant economic force and marketplace in in the future because of their population but exactly. it looks like almost india probably has a better has a better shot at it because of the younger generation that's that's right. there and of course yeah. the, the i'm sure the modernization that they're going to eventually do um hopefully they don't fall uh camp to the same things we did i mean when we destroyed the family we pretty much destroyed um everything and that's what we're finding out now uh through uh, a whole lifetime of generations that destroying the family and destroying fathers was was uh was was the thing that would take apart everything um now we're just in utter collapse really when you look at how we're built so it'll be interesting to see how you guys go down that path and and yeah. having having you know we have a much smaller generation to support the older generation in fact one of the problems we're having in our society right now is is you know we were warned for so many years that, that when the baby boomers retired our much smaller generations that followed would not be able to support their social security and the and the power of that and right. now we're really struggling because so many of the people from even my generation gen x and and boomers with covid just went hey screw it man we're out we're we're out of the workforce we're we're just going to retire early we're out and yeah. now we're really finding out how much we're missing those workers and and how much is right. affecting our economy inflation and you know is is it's is creative mayhem and bellum over here so you guys have really i mean i think you're one of the few countries that have a future with you know a really young populace and mass yeah. that's that's bigger than the older populace so it'll be interesting yeah. to see how these things play out with marriage and traditionalism and and etc cetera, etc cetera. And, and hopefully they don't right. make the same mistakes we did yeah but there's a huge challenge as well about that because we have this massive you know it's like it's it's any economy's dream right to have this massive labor force ready to be employed but we're yeah. also not able to produce jobs at that scale um wow. because india kind of jumped from a manufacturing economy to i mean a, a, an agrarian economy to a service economy essentially missing the manufacturing part wow. um and we just do not have the jobs that we can sustain this um um you know kind of huge uh, labor force or like meaningfully employ them so one of the problems we're dealing with at the moment is one of the highest rates of educated unemployment um so we have hordes of highly educated um young indians that are graduating um trying to enter the workforce but are not able to find jobs that can that are meaningful to them or can um, wow. can you know fulfill their aspirations um so then they will take a gap year try to like enter the part time economy or do some temp work but um yeah so it uh, you know it's not really um uh, we're at the stage at the moment where you know we have a lot of frustrated aspirations of of these young people um mm-hmm. especially um and and I, i think that that's part of why uh you know often we'll hear about like a um in in one of the states a train will be set to fire in uh and in a you know an active um, demonstration against um a, you know just the pathetic um uh, l- uh, levels of unemployment um wow. recently there was um uh, an ad posted for 
um, a railways job. I think there were a, a few hundred jobs um, that were advertised. And the millions of young Indians applied for those jobs. And they were very, like, um, you know, very basic level jobs that did not, mm. that required, I think, a 10th grade um, exam certification. But, um, you know, engineers and doctors and highly qualified professionals um, applied for these jobs because they don't have jobs or uh, places to, you know, wow. um, fulfill their dreams. Yeah. yeah. Is so, entrepreneurism yeah, a big thing there or is it? Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like a big um, sort of surge in, uh, you know, entrepreneurial, um, like startups and, you know, like, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there needs to be like a Silicon Valley over there sort of type. Yeah, PC I think thing. there's some form of that coming up in the South. Um, but yeah. Of course, um, you know, not at the same scale. I mean, uh, the CEO of uh, Google right now, I mean, he grew up on a dirt floor in India. I was right, born exactly. on a dirt floor. Yeah, exactly. And I yeah. mean, but uh, you know, if you you've got to have um, you got to have some mechanisms in society, government rules, regulations, and you know, people that can loan money, and you know, there's a whole exactly. lot of support that you comes from the VC. In so, place. Yeah, system yeah, in place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it'll be interesting. I mean, when you have that many people and they're that industrious to try and and you know they have that industrialism of youth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I yeah. think there's a good chance of uh, finding it. And of course, you know, yeah. over here we just have a bunch of lazy kids who uh, <laughs> grew up with silver spoons in their mouth and a phone in their hand, and they just think everything comes through YouTube or something. I don't know or TikTok. <laughs> um so you know we uh, some of those yeah. too of course we do do you i, I yeah 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 <laughs> weak men weak men strong men create weak or uh easy times and easy times create weak men and uh, we, I see, we seem I to be in the circle way, yeah yeah we seem to be yeah. in the circle of of weak men and now we have to go into hard times to to find strong yeah. men again um so this is kind of this is really interesting i mean the the caste system that's over there I mean, the, the combination of languages, so it's hard to escape and move to another state or area in right. India, I suppose, if you have language yeah. barrier issues. But yes, but um, in most places, Hindi and English are widely spoken. Um, yeah. So you, you can move around, especially in the big okay. cities, yeah, no problem. Uh, but of course, in like smaller, in the countryside, mm -hmm. yeah, that might be an issue. Yeah, they have to worry about people hunting you down. Holy crap. Yeah. I mean, if yeah, yeah. someone stole my kids, I'd be like, have fun with that they're expensive <laughs> go ahead keep them like uh yeah just be nice to them and you can keep them and you know all that good stuff take them off my hands I'd, <laughs> i i'd like three i'd be like if you change their diapers you can have them just go ahead just get them out of my hair they're crying That's a lot weird. i'm just being mean <laughs> I don't have kids for the obvious <laughs> reasons. Uh, I don't do diapers. I don't like crying. I, I have enough of that with the uh, people in my life. Um, it's social media. Yeah. Uh, I, I seem to have a, 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 a quite the falling on social media of people crying. Anyway, uh, anything more you want to touch on the book before we go out? Um, yeah. I, 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 my hope is that the people who read this book come away thinking about, um, you know, what they've had to put at stake for, for love and how love can take, you know, various forms in our life. Um, in, 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 uh, in these stories that I write about, um, you know, it, it really dwells in the afterlife of what happens when you attain love. So, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of watch these couples live with their grand love being diminished into the ordinariness of daily life. Um, so I just hope people, you know, kind of think that, you know, love can have various meanings. It can mean joy, joy thrill, also regret and um, also like um, uh, confusion and sadness. And I just I just mm. hope that it makes them think about um, their own lives and, you know, um, kind of make them see the bigger picture. Yeah. And, you know, I, you know, it's it's crazy what people do for love. That's uh, every long every great love song is about love. I mean. The heart uh, just cannot be bridled, I guess, when yeah. it comes down to it. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. Uh, well, it's been wonderful having you on the show. Thank you for coming on and sharing. Thank your you. Wonderful Thank you so much for having me. There you go. Thank you. So Order much. it up, folks. Uh, wherever fine books are sold, go pre-order the book now. The Newlyweds re rearranging marriage in modern India. Maybe I'll move to India and find a nice young lass. Uh, <laughs> the uh, do they still call him a lass? Am I, am I just old? I don't know. Probably. I use that as a joke, folks. Um, so thanks for coming on the show. Give us your .com so people can find you on the interwebs. Yes. 
it's um, mansichoksi.com is my website. You'll also see some of my work. You'll get links to the pre-order. Um, my Twitter is mansi underscore choksi. Um, Instagram is mansi underscore choksi. Um, yeah, I think that's it. There you go. There you go. Uh, order the book, folks. Uh, also, go see everything we're doing on Goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Voss, uh, The Chris Voss Show on, of course, YouTube as well, and every place else on the internet. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe, and we'll see you guys 